Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and it's July. We're at the one year anniversary of this tank. So a year ago I bought this tank off of Craigslist. Paid 450 bucks for a 90 gallon system, jerry cabinet, hood, aqua sea protein skimmer, sump, everything you need to really get started. So the main parts I'm still using that I got with the Craigslist bit is the tank, the stand, and the skimmer. I've obviously done my own sump and all that kind of stuff now, but it's working pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick tank tour, kind of show you where things are at. All right, so here's the full frontal view of the tank. Um, over the last year, I've had some really good success and some really miserable failures. And I have to say the last couple of months have been more of a struggle than a success. But as Jim Stein would say, we keep moving forward. And um, today we're gonna try to focus on the positive as much as possible while going over some of the not so good. But it's still looking really nice. I love it. It's the focal point of my living room. So let's take a tr quick trip and look at all the corals and fish. So the fish are doing just incredibly well. Rankins, the blue tang, has had ick in the past, but we've eliminated that. So over the last year, he has grown dramatically. He is fat, he is healthy, he is beautiful, and he is ick-free today. So I am just so happy about that. The two chromis are just happy, healthy little fish. They're just gorgeous little things in the tank, and they are just no problems whatsoever. They eat well. They're just the easiest fish I've had to take care of. And then the solar rise. He has been really great. He went through quarantine, no issues. He is beautiful. He does have the one Popeye, which I think just adds a little more to him. It does influence his personality a little bit because he's always looking out his good eye. But really, really cool little fish. He likes to kind of hang out here and lay in the corner. Uh, but absolutely gorgeous. He has jumped out of the tank and then went down to the sump, which scared the bejesus out of me for a couple days when I couldn't find him. But he is doing incredibly well. And Pinky the Yellow Tang. And he's called Pinky because that was the name my son thought of for him. And it's kind of a funny little name. He is happy. He's healthy. He has fattened up a lot. He went through quarantine with no issues. The aggression between him and the Blue Tang is pretty much over with. They do fight a little bit over food still, but that's to be expected. Um, all of his fin damage and stuff is completely healed. And he is just doing great. And the two Ocellaris clowns are doing fantastic. Um, Nemo, the one right up front that you see, he is seven years old now. And he is just beautiful, he's fat, he's healthy, and he is just a testament to how long these fish can last. I mean, he's seven years old and I hope I get another seven years out of him. Just a lovely little fish. And his buddy Kuki, they're buds, they hang out together, they love each other. I am just guessing that Nemo is taking on the role of the female, although there is no spawning action going on. So now we'll take a quick look at the corals. So here's what I like to call softy corner. I've got the green spaghetti leather in front or Singulara leather, um, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If not, sorry about that. Um, he has been just fantastic over the last year. No real issues with him. Um, under this lighting, he is a brilliant green. You'll see in some of my older videos, he almost turned a pink color, but here he is just gorgeous. Um, the Pulsing Xenia, we're doing really well until I change the light bulbs and the added intensity of the lighting just really did a number on them. They're coming back, they're pulsing pretty well, but they're not near the size that they used to be. They really did take a nice beating when that happened. And the Colt's Coral. Um, he is about doubled in size over the last year and he is getting really, 
really close to the stylo, which is already having issues. So I might be fragging him to try to take care of that. He, they can get a little aggressive. That could be part of why his polyps aren't opening, but I'm assuming the reason the stylo's polyps aren't opening, and I'll see if I can get a close up of that that looks reasonable. Nah, not really. Anyways, I'm assuming the reason his polyps aren't opening is when I had my bulb failure and I put the Odyssey light bulb in there, that that was the best it could do. And I've got the Anthelia in back, kind of hard to see at this angle, but it's doing really well. And in that corner with the low lighting, the growth is really slowed down. It's not the weed that it once was, so I actually really like it now that it's just kind of taken over one little corner and it's just hanging out and waving and it's just a really beautiful cool little coral um, so I'm happy with it just if you decide to get this coral be really careful with it because it really can spread all over everything and take over everything but in this situation right here it's working great for me The rose bubble tip anemone pretty much just wanders this tank continuously. He's been in that spot for about four days. Um, not a lot of lighting, but apparently he likes it there. Um, he's probably stinging the crap out of my candy cane that's right next to him, but really, what can you do? Um, I could move the candy cane, but it's not showing any real ill effects at this point. But kind of unusual that this anemone ever since I redid the rock work just will not settle in it has been literally months and he just wanders the tank so interesting but a little weird and the candy cane that's sitting right next to him is doing really well um, splitting off into two heads I love these kryptonite candy canes um, got another one over there that's not quite doing as well but it's still okay. It was kind of a lower cost piece when I bought him. Had some issues, but I think it was like a $5 frag. So I thought I'd give him a shot. And then there's another kind of blue-green candy cane above him. Um, I really do just love candy canes. They're just really cool. They're fast growers. They split off. Um, I just love them. My wife doesn't get my attraction to them, but I think they are just fantastic. And this, of course, is the first candy cane I ever purchased and it is more than doubled in size um, it's I've had it for eight or nine months the when I bought him his color was more of a brownish white and now he's this brilliant green so I really really am happy with that coral um, this purple Monty frag I've had for six months or so and it just hasn't done much of anything um, it was in the tank when I had the calcium and alkalinity issues. Um, it had good growth up until then, and then it's completely just like stalled out. So hopefully it'll come back. It's not showing any more signs of issues, just no signs of growth. My red Monty has grown significantly, and it is fully attached onto the rock. It doesn't need the glue that I put on there to hold it and it just looks beautiful so he's doing great and the clam this is a Durasa clam um, what can I say this guy is fantastic he has about doubled in size in the last nine months the colors not as brilliant as some of them you'll see when I bought him he was a burgundy color he has changed to more of a greenish brown color it's got to be just lighting or who knows what but um, health and size he's doing just great I can't complain about him um, you know it'd be always nice if he was prettier but you just can't argue with health health is one of the big things we strive for in this hobby And my Duncans, my Duncans have been under a lot of stress lately. What happened is, is when I put my WP40 powerhead on here, 
it was just too much for him. I had him on the pulse mode, and they were just getting blown around and beaten up, and they just didn't like the flow. So now I'm running my WP40 on the lowest setting on the Wave Maker with the other JBJ pump, and it's made all the difference. The Duncans are opening back up. I've got one there and one over here. And they are just doing so much better. So it's just trying to find a nice balance between what the SPS is like and what the LPS is like. Well, as far as not opening up goes, my frog spawn doesn't put his tentacles out like he used to. Um, he has changed colors a little bit. He's a lot more green than he used to be, which is really cool. And he is splitting massively. And I'm not sure if the reason he's not opening up is because of a health issue or if it's just because of the amount of head splitting that's going on. I mean, you can see here there's a head that's splitting into three. The one behind him is actually splitting into four. This guy's splitting into three. This guy over here is splitting into three. So. He's developing a lot of heads, and I don't know if that's restricting the ability for the heads to, for the tentacles to really extend out, or if there's another underlying issue. But the splitting makes me think he's healthy. The polyp extension makes me think that there's an issue. So I'll just try to monitor him and see how he goes. My purple hammer I've had for over a year, well, close to a year now, and he is beautiful. He's doing good. You'll see in my first video that one side had a polyp extension issue. It still doesn't quite come up as much as the left side does. The right side always is in a little more, but he's really gotten healthy. He's gotten happy. Um, I love the color on this guy. I think it's just great, so I'm very happy with where he's at. Now for some of the bad news. Here's my Alienite Chalice. And this is actually the good one. Um, I've had a really big one. And when the I put the new lights in, it just bleached everything out. Um, and I broke him into pieces because the really bleached out stuff was in the center to try to save it. This is the best bit. I hope it manages to live because I love these guys. Um, but we'll see. You can see over here some of the devastation on these other two that I tried to move. And I'm pretty sure I'm losing those two. But what can you do? Um, but I did break him up to try to save the try to save something of it. And that's really all we can do. Um, another great success is the potato chip coral. He is fully encrusted on the rock, gorgeous green color and just doing extremely well. Um, very happy with this guy, never had an issue with him, never had a struggle with him. He has just been really easy and really good growth. Um, the polyps, the zoanthids, have had some pretty reasonably good growth on them. Um, I'm pretty happy with them, they're doing well there. So I hope to continue to see good growth out of them. And my Galaxia in the back corner just hasn't done anything. It's brown, but it's not dying. It still extends polyps. So um, not too worried about it because now that I kind of know how damaging Galaxia can be, it's probably better I have a small colony anyways. But, you know, he's doing all right. And then these two Acros. So this guy up front has just been stellar. Great growth, incredible polyp extension, and never, ever, ever an issue. I've had him for months now. The one off to the right, more of a challenge. He's been green, he's been brownish white, and now he's turning this like burgundy color, which is really, really good, other than at this angle I can't show you, he's kind of got some bleaching out going on in the lower bits so there is still something health wise wrong with him but he's been a trooper he's been really trying to stay alive there have been a couple times that i thought this guy was going to die so the fact that he's still with me gives me hope and 
And then the frog spawn is doing, this frog spawn is purple and green. The color's great. The polyp extension's great. Just never had an issue with him. Just lovely. And then my open brain. I love this guy. He is big. He is fat. He's healthy. Um, he ex exhibits feeding behavior almost every day. And it's just been great. He's doing really well. Um, he kind of does change size a lot throughout the day, but he seems to be very happy and healthy. Um, one of the bigger problems I'm having that you can see here is I've got a cyano issue. I've tried several things to clean it up, and it's still not going away. Um, the only thing I've really found that works in the past is just good water quality and time. So we'll see if it clears up or if it gets worse. And now we're on to this brown Monty. It's an encrusting slash plating Monty. Um, I've moved him enough time that whenever he plates off, he breaks the plates off, um, which is more my fault than anything. Um, but he is doing really, <clears throat> really well. He has more than doubled in size since I got him. And one of the really cool things is you'll see all the feather dusters in there, and they really add a lot of color to the Monty right there. So that's cool, but then the way the Monty interacts with the feather dusters is really awesome. It encrusts around the stems and will eventually kill the feather duster, but in doing so, it creates really cool patterns in the coral of where the feather duster used to be. And you can, I don't know if I can zoom in well enough to really show off it, but you can kind of see all just the really random patterns in this thing, and that's all caused by those feather dusters trying to grow in there and then getting grown over by the Monty. Um, just really cool. Not the normal flat pattern you'll see in a Monty and, that, and that's a lot of the reason for it. This acro is the ORA piece. Um, it used to be a lot more blue. Now it's um, more of a purple color and peach color in places. Um, and it's doing really well. It's had really pretty good growth and um, it's got reasonable polyp extension so I'm very happy with this guy and he's just done extremely well for me. And now onto the torch coral. This guy has just been spectacular. He's one of the first pieces I've owned. I've had him for getting close to a year now. He was one of the first pieces I bought for this tank and he is just beautiful. Um, the really cool thing about him is a lot of the affiliates I've had are very picky about where you place them for lighting and water flow. They don't want to open up or they have issues. And this guy has been just great. No matter where I put him, lighting, water flow, it doesn't matter. He opens up. He's happy. He's healthy. He is great. I love this guy. I wish every euphilia could be as cool as him. Okay. So there's all the livestock, the fish and corals. Um, it's looking reasonably good, like I said, up and downs. But this video is getting close to 20 minutes long, so I think I'm going to break it into two bits, and I'm going to come back with a part two for the equipment. So stay tuned and watch for that. So thanks for watching Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. Like and subscribe.